What's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about accumulators, what they do, how to connect them, and everything to do with them. Uh, first, make sure that you hit the subscribe, like, and share the videos. Uh, it doesn't cost you a thing to do so, but it does help us to make more videos. Um, also go to Tennessee on Hydraulics on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Make sure that you're following us on those for upcoming videos and everything that we post. Uh, in addition to that, make sure that you're going to other lowrider guys' uh, pages on YouTube, such as RJ Tickler, Alex from Hoppos, uh, the Cadillac Dan Show. Make sure you're going to all those and like those and share those as well. These guys, you know, they're just like me. They're trying to put these videos out to help the community. Doesn't hurt you one bit to go to them and subscribe and watch their videos. All right, so to move on, uh, we've got accumulators. What are they for? Pretty much they act as a shock. That's all they really are. All right, so we're gonna jump right into this. There's a few different ways that you can put the accumulators on, uh, one of which is on the cylinder side, one of which is on the pump side. So first one that I'm gonna show you is on the cylinder side of the rear. So what you're gonna have, you got your accumulator right here. It's a half inch uh, port on this one in particular. The fitting, you'll notice, has an O-ring down towards the bottom and it seals through pressure and an O-ring on the inside. It is also a swivel fitting. You can see that so obviously you're going to screw this in nice and tight it does not require teflon tape on your cylinder on this particular cylinder it is a 3 8 port it's a male to a female okay so it's a 90 degree male female and then you've got a t fitting that uh, has male male female and then you've got your half inch or excuse me not half inch 3 8 uh, fitting that goes in here. Now that's if you're running 3 8 lines. So now that you've got this all together, you're going to literally just connect it just like this. And what I would suggest is to tighten everything down and kind of put it to where it almost rests against the cylinder like this, unless it is barely sticking through the floor. Otherwise, tighten it down just enough to where it's like this and it just clears everything okay so it's not hitting anything get it all nice and tight make sure that it you know sits there and doesn't move now these swivel fittings they can come loose if this is hit by anything so if you're doing it this way make sure that it's not hitting anything in the trunk then you'll just connect this right back and there you go it's done it is in line and that is all there is to it that's on putting it on the cylinder side now I do want to show you one more thing that you can do if you choose to do it. I like to do it uh, when I'm running these. You've got, you want to run a shutoff valve so that, let's just say that you want to go and hop this thing and you don't want the uh, accumulator uh, acting as a shock to mess up your hop in the front. You put it on here, you can run these to where you're basically turning your sl or your accumulators completely off so you basically just put it on there and then shut it off so this is no longer working now with that said before you start doing that you want to drop the car first and and hold down the switch for about three seconds clear all the pressure and then shut it off okay so that's how you shut off this on the cylinder side Okay, so here is another way of doing it. Now keep in mind, there's about a hundred different ways that you can do your plumbing to where this will work, uh, but this is just you know a way that I put it together. Um, the basic concept is, is that you have to have the accumulator in line with your uh, cylinder and the fluid going through, so it is constantly using it as like a shock, basically, if that makes sense. So on every block you've got a pressure side and a return side now some blocks may have the pressure side and a return side on the side or something along those lines but they should be marked so if your system is going like this where it goes through the dump you've got it coming out uh, some kind of way with some sort of a fitting in this particular case i have a 3 8 um, 3 8 male 3 8 female uh, 90 degree you've got your check valve right after that and then you've got your dump where it goes through the dump it goes to a t-fitting and then connects 
to the um, accumulator right here. Now, if you wanted to, again, you can put a, um, a shutoff valve on your um, accumulator. And then of course it goes to your fitting that goes out to the, the hose to the cylinder itself. And then of course your return to your slowdown and then goes back into the pump. Now this is on a single pump, single dump setup. Okay, so here is another option. You've got your pressure side, it's coming up, T fitting that's going through the dump and on the back side of the dump, not the bottom, the back side of the dump, instead of the pressure going through the dump out to the cylinder, it is actually back here. It's not actually going through the, uh, through the dump here. So basically it comes off the block. You've got a, a check valve, T fitting, your dump goes through, connects to your accumulator, then the bottom side of your dump, when you hit the switch, it then returns it and goes through and slow down into the, the tank. This is the cleanest configuration I could come up with with the fittings that I have. So to explain it, you've got your block 3 8 uh, 90 elbow, and you got male, female, your check valve, uh, your dump going through your dump um, to a T fitting, and then the uh, accumulator sitting on top, and then of course the, the fitting that goes out to your hoses that go out to your cylinders. Then you got your return and goes through through your slowdown back into your block. Now this is all stationary. Uh, it once tightened down, it shouldn't move. Um, it's as clean as you can get it with this big bulky thing. So um, you know, without adding some hard lines or something and chroming this, this is about as good as it's going to look, at least that I can uh, come up with with what I've got. So obviously, like I said, there's a million ways of uh, putting this all together. Okay, so a few last things to note. I generally only put accumulators on the rear of setups, and the reason is is because most of your bounce comes from the rear. You put them on the rear, and then you'll notice that it rides substantially better. You can put them on the front, obviously, but if you put them on the front, you're gonna lose your hop. If you hop it at all, you're not gonna be able to hop, unless you put close, uh, shut off valves on the accumulators, okay? Now, to go a step further, if you ride all the way down or all the way up, your accumulators are not working. So they need fluid and movement in order to work. So if you're riding all the way down and there's no pressure on them, well, guess what? They're not working. If you ride all the way up and you're at 100% maxed out, the inside of those accumulators are maxed out too. They're not, they're not gonna be able to do this. But in addition to that, if you do overlock up your system, I have heard of these things exploding. I personally never ran into that, however, I am a stickler for never overlocking up my system. There's nothing good about overlocking up your system. Everything has a tendency to break. The more you lock it out, the more you hit that switch after it's locked out, you're just asking for problems. I have heard of these things going off like a bomb. So the easiest way to explain it is that you need one accumulator per cylinder. If you do try to run one accumulator on a two dump system, like a pump to the rear that has two, two dumps going to the rear. If you try to run one accumulator, one, it's not gonna be enough to give you the nice soft ride that you're looking for. But in addition to that, you'll also notice that, let's say that you lift it up 50% and the accumulator is kind of working, you'll notice when you go around turns that the whole vehicle will start to kind of do this it's transferring fluid, okay? So you don't want that. Um, so you need one accumulator per side and run a T-fitting and just connect it that way. It's the easiest way to do it. I hope you found this video informative and useful and hopefully you can put together your setup the way that you want it to put. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and share the videos and make sure you're watching for the next videos that are coming up. If you see something or need something, send me a message and if it's something that I can do, I'll put together a video and post it.